report on this or in progress. Okay, so um, uh, thank you, Ben, for um, uh, giving me some of your time. I know you're busy doing amazing things. Um, I want to say that uh, we had a pre-interview um, in which uh, I found out uh, that uh, you, you come from a bio biology degree, uh, ecosystems background, uh, you're a freelancer, um, you have um, you you are interested in the blockchain blockchain more broadly distributed ledger yeah. technologies and the uh, discussions about regulation too much control and uh, we need regulation. Um, you work um, uh, with two small African countries that we're not going to specify uh, in, that they want to digitalize their currency and um, and also uh, the the idea behind that is. Uh, that we need that you want to develop a different infrastructure uh, because right now there's no biodiversity credit that exists to but to build this you need uh, people to maintain and your idea is to maintain the atmosphere by growing trees and then this capture captures the carbon so you have this carbon based currency that your uh, base currency or material based currency that you're interesting but you cannot do this because it's counterfeiting. Um, uh, it's counterfeiting uh, without government backing a permission. So we're discussing this about the carbon um, futures market or existing carbon uptake um, and um, and how this could be demonstrated by using uh, an app that you mentioned. Uh, so like after kind of- Well, big... some tool would be developed, yeah. Yeah, so after, so, so Jacob, welcome. I've just done a, like a prologue of what we know about Ben so far, which you have read. I said the notes. Thank you for coming. And uh, after we kind of like establish where where Ben is coming from and what he's doing at the moment, it would be nice to hear more about more specifics, like in terms of about this project with the two small African countries and the government currency. What kind of steps are you taking? What have you promised them? What are the difficulties with it? And all that kind of stuff. We can start maybe about your reading of the environment that you have to, not the environment as in nature, the environment that you have to navigate to make this digitalization of the currency happen, but also this new infrastructure that you want to do that has to do with carbon or material-based currency. So I think that's where we are, right? So what is your reading of the yeah. environment and the difficulties? Well, I, I mean, it's it's at this point better to speak of it from a, a theoretical, like a fictional country, like uh -huh. it could be a, a fictional Mediterranean or African country or any any fictional, you know, because we're looking at a, a system. We're not looking at a I'm not looking too much at a specific geography, which any specific geography can be adapted if you have a, a sufficient, a sufficiently flexible set of tools in your system. Uh -huh. Yeah. OK. So in fictional ways then, what 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 are you trying to accomplish in relation to digitizing currency or better still, because I think it's more interesting is the materials based or carbon based currency that uh, is based on the tree growing stuff, right? So tell us a bit it, more it about would that. Be, um, it, it would be, it would be a, uh... Uh, it would probably be digital. I mean, unless we go back to the Stone Age, we're, every everything is probably going to be accounted for digitally in some way. Uh, you you st you may still have some hard hard currency paper and coins and such, but um, and just for uh, uh, fu future reference, when I say currency, I mean any financial instrument could be you know stock or token or. Okay. what have you just a broad category and call it currency yeah uh -huh. um so the problem that i see with the uh, uh, most digital currencies these days is that they have the same problem that uh, national many national currencies do and that is that uh, there's no basis it's just an abstract number that has no relation to reality whatsoever which of course allows you to use financial instruments to do things like if joseph uh, invests one penny at the birth of Jesus, by now he has a ball of gold larger than the earth. That's not, <laughs> you know, not an effective uh, uh, system. So uh, in order to overcome this problem and make a realistic sense of, of a, a currency system or an economic system, it has to have some relation to uh, material reality. In this case, we're looking at, at carbon. Now, um, 
uh, it, it for basic purposes, it, it could be that this uh, could be backed by anything material, could be a tree spice, uh, uh, could be a metal. The big difference between a metal and uh, an organic uh, uh, basis is that in the organic basis, it grows. A metal is static. You have the same amount uh, and that doesn't change. It, it doesn't reproduce, it doesn't grow. So you can never increase the uh, amount of currency. If, assume it was all hard currency and all issued in gold, the, the amount that you have can never change because that's the amount of gold that you have. Uh, when you're talking about things like uh, carbon, uh, which is, you know, best carbon uptake is still trees, regardless of when any of the uh, technology and patent people tell you that trees are still winning. Um, that there is a that we can determine uh, the atmospheric cycling necessary for carbon and achieve targets based upon uh, real um, geomorphological numbers as far as at atmospheric cycling, you know, uh, and and what we need to maintain a breathable atmosphere, basically. Um, so. When it, when it comes to that, there are, are there is currently the EU carbon market, um, and there's the evaluation tool REDD Plus, which has had some some problems. So when it comes to uh, trying to measure carbon uptake in order to quantify it and thereby monetize it, um, verifiability is a big issue. You know, I can say that I've planted a thousand trees, but have I actually planted a thousand trees? And this is where uh, some monitoring tool or monitoring st cr staff crew is going to be required. Uh, and so um, ideally, if we're looking at someone like a small country, small holder, you know, um, a, a lot of times uh, these people are... Uh, that, you know, the, the language of the application may not be their native language. It may not even, they may be from such a minority that they're always speaking their second language when they speak to anyone outside their community. So it has to be very simple and very functional for them to be able to self-evaluate and self-report on their progress. Is um, you, I think you so, sorry to interrupt before that this, like the idea is for this to happen on an app or that, like that, that this can, um, measuring and that kind of thing reporting uh to, to increase your credit on the on the currency if i understand correctly it's going to happen on an app or a phone app or mobile app or i would imagine that a, a cell phone app would be used and that no additional hardware would be needed you know save i mean there's the possibility that yes we can uh um do field uh, soil sampling for carbon or anything else for that matter, but you'd have to, that would mean that you'd have to have a, 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 a analyzer <laughs> in the field to attach to the phone. And, uh, you know, many, many people who are in the actual work of doing this, small farmers, you know, many of whom are operating completely by hand, except for their cell phone, um, are not, it's, it's an unneeded expense. And, and so uh, if, if you, soil carbon really needed to be measured, you could either have a monitoring team stop by or they could send in a sample uh, in, into, a, say, a national laboratory uh, in order to get a sample of their soil. So, so this is sort of like the practical thing. How do you get this to the, I guess, to the consumer end? Like, would that make sense? I'm not very good at this stuff. But basically, like, that's how they would kind of use it but before you get to that kind of user end um in, in relation to how because you've mentioned to me that if you don't have government support this is like counterfeiting basically so how yeah. what is your like then uh your relationship with the governments that they've asked you to do this like i mean how, how long is the idea that this is going to take? Like, what are your blueprints or whatever, like plans that you've shown them? What's the kind of context uh, in terms of the political economy of it all and the bureaucracy of it all? Like, you go to the government and say, like, here's well, my idea, and the circuit give you that kind of money. You do it, you're a freelancer, you build your own team. Like, how does this actually work? Okay. 
the national currency, the paper in circulation, right, is is issued and backed by the government, probably the uh, uh, government central bank. That's for the uh, which keeps track of. So that's for and the, so the central bank in most cases. But that's for digitalizing the, their national currency, whatever that is. This is separate from the the carbon based currency story, right? Or are they? Right. The, the first obstacle with central bankers is convincing them that they are allowed to have more than one currency. That's <laughs> that's the first obstacle. You know, say, well, you've already done this one currency. What's stopping you from issuing another one? Uh, the pound has the pound in circulation, and it also has pound sterling. Pound sterling is backed by silver. The pound in circulation is not. Uh, it, it's currency by fiat. So if you already have currency by fiat and you and you could have a metal standard currency, pound sterling, for example, uh, then there is nothing stopping you from also having a carbon based and or biodiversity based currency also issued. Um, and and so uh, one one big thing with uh, car car carbon markets as they currently stand is that everyone is concerned with uptake because they want to, because they're working on a model of emission and uptake, right? So no one is counting the current carbon stock, uh, which would put a place like uh, Brazil or the uh, DRC on a very good footing if they were allowed to count their standing carbon stock. A lot of jungle there which is a lot of biomass. Um, but under the current regime, you could only count this for carbon credit if you cut it all down or burned it and then planted more trees in order to demonstrate your carbon uptake. This is insane. <laughs> they sh and, and you can imagine that the DRC, take a look at the vegetation layer on the satellite photograph, and you'll very quickly see that they're holding a lot of biomass. And, and yet uh, remain to be uh, one of the po poorest countries in the world. Uh, but if, if this regime were to change and they were allowed to count their standing biomass, especially if you were to count things like biodiversity and contiguous area of biodiversity, which is important to a, a ecosystem biologist, you know, how large of an area are we talking about that is adjacent to other areas which increases biodiversity? In the, in the biodiversity department or maintains it. So if you were to do something like cut a road through your jungle, then you then it's no longer contiguous. It's no longer a contiguous space, which means that animals will wander into the road and be hit by cars. Uh, and, and so just the just dividing space physically uh, will have an effect on the on the biodiversity. Local to that road, you will get a lower biodiversity rating simply by the turbulence and the vehicles and the et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, so any, any hold, impact hold is going on, to come directly. So, okay, so what did you have to do to convince uh, the small African countries or the whatever that you collaborated with that this carbon-based currency idea can work? And what, what did you ask them for to make it work? So wh what, what is your planning? How many years? Like what kind of team? Like what, what does this involve to, to make it happen basically? This is what I'm asking. And, and... Well, it's obviously we're pre-feasibility right now, which means that we'd have to take a um, fictional country and evaluate all of the standing resource, which means that, you know, biologists, field biologists would have to go out there and count the, uh, you know, get some grip on the effective biodiversity. I mean, we don't want to go down to individual bacteria but you need to have some idea of what kind of biodiversity index you've got in a given space. Wouldn't that mean that there'd be like an organization in the country that already has that information, right? So, or not? They would have to uh, build it from scratch. Many don't. Hmm. Okay. It might either have to be built from scratch or, I mean, like the United States, for example, has the USGS, which accounts for the geologic data, but it doesn't account for the biodiversity data. So um, USGS would have an idea of how much soil carbon is in, in agricultural land, but they, they wouldn't uh, have, a, they would not be connected to another department, which is e evaluating the actual biological resource sitting on that land. 
So interagency uh, uh, cooperation would be required in order to make that kind of establishment in an already existing system. But if the system doesn't exist, if your fictional country doesn't have paved roads, they certainly have not been counting the total biomass output of their of their uh, uh, space. They don't even have paved roads. So um, it, stage, really, this is a, allows it for it to be. At which stage, stage is your collaboration with the, the, the small African countries, the two countries? Like, so basically you're discussing with them, have they award you a contract? Well, it's pre-feasibility, but again, uh, it could be a small African country. It could be a small Mediterranean country for that matter. It could be any, uh, you know, non-world power, so, you know, so, non-superpower. Okay, so let's get like like a little bit then on in depth with, so besides the convincing and all that kind of stuff with these governments and evaluating and all that kind of stuff that you will have- How to, to convince get, them? Yeah. How to convince them? So have you convinced that, them already? I'm asking, have you convinced them already? No, I have not. Okay, you have not. Okay. They're right. remarkably slow to move. Right. Hey, what can I tell them other than that, you know, uh, I believe it is Finland has, has just- accrued a massive debt, which the EU is saying that they need to make up for their uh, uh, carbon loss because they've cut down the trees and altered their uh, climate by by cutting down all the trees. And now the carbon sinks are starting to decompose and be released into the atmosphere. And the EU says you need to pay between two and five billion euros for your for your carbon, Finland. And so where will will Finland get this? Surely some domestic programs, but they, they because they, they've already started to have an issue of, of things like soil breakdown, uh, where the soil is releasing much more carbon now that it's not covered with trees, than uh, could be uh, recovered by planting trees on that same space. So there's going to, in carbon terms, we would have to have a stopgap measure, which is going to have to come from somewhere else, because you can't grow enough trees on yes, that space. So yeah. So the, the idea about because slow it down. There are, are carbon markets currently, right? There's a European carbon market. You say that there are because I don't know enough about this. But uh, what I want to ask is, okay, so this idea that you have has anybody else like kind of tried this out in the world, like this kind of idea of carbon based or material based currency, like on on the eco diversity biodiversity side. I mean, not generally in this life. I mean, on this particular carbon base, has anybody tried it yet anywhere else? There are many working on it, oh. and I do try to keep a, a monitor of my market in in my area. You know, to see if there's any competition or maybe a job. Who knows? Yeah. Um, and like like any emerging market, I will say that it where uh, claims not be. Uh, verified that charlatans will instantly proliferate. Right. Uh, there there is, will be many there people. Is, I, what, what I'm trying to say is that if other people like are, are trying this logic or like they're they're like dreaming up projects like this, right? Do you know of them? I mean, like, uh, are they online somewhere or whatever? Or is it is it so new that uh, there isn't like an ecosystem of people working on carbon-based currency? Is there an ecosystem of carbon-based currency kind of people that are working on this? This is what I'm asking that you know of. There is, uh, they're, they're attempting. I can, I can assemble a list and send it to you. Um, but I think that the big question comes with uh, the, the verifiability. That again, if I have a piece of paper and I say that there's a ball of gold larger than this piece of paper is worth a ball of gold larger than the earth, how do I prove that? And so verifiability is what is going to be the big stumbling block in this arena, is verifying that the carbon is actually being uptaken or is actually being stored. And this means that someone from the parks, park services, for example, the, you know, is going to have to go out there and you know take a sample of the of the trees in order to est establish you know how many trees do we have how many different species of insects and animals and da 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 da, da. so um if you uh have a situation where uh the carbon is being stored in a natural ecosystem then they're then trying to break down an ecosystem 
is very time consuming process. Rather than trying to evaluate the entire ecosystem from a, a, an ecology standpoint, you're just saying, okay, we know that about this much carbon in about this kind of space. And if we take one sample to another, that the deviation is small enough that we can establish a standard. Once that sta standard is established for any given type of activity, whether that's being undisturbed jungle or uh, uh, improved uh, crop practices or slash and burn or whatever people are doing or, or whatever is biologically there can be accounted for and it can be quantified. And, and that means that if, it's va if that's valuable to anyone, uh, that it can be traded and now we're at a currency, that we have a standard of value and that it's tradable. And this is how we convince our, our poor small country is to say that how would you like to trade these credits that we've established a standard for in for something like euros, pounds, dollars, okay. right? The, the, the large fiat currencies. So, <clears throat> and so- Are there other companies or um, R&D groups in companies or governments, uh, ministries or anywhere that uh, they're doing this kind of work? You said that as an ecosystem. What does this ecosystem look like? I mean, who is in it? Is it companies? Is it government ministries or whatever, you know, environments or like, or like, I don't know, like, so what does this look like? Because you're like, you say you're a freelancer. Gover all government ministries are hopelessly slow. Uh, they're trying to regulate uh, uh, cryptocurrency. They're at the, at the point where they're trying to regulate cryptocurrency. Well, bad news, boys, that it's already been stolen, you know, and but the but the theft is the of, of FTX, for example, is now the justification that they have to try to catch up on regulation of crypto. That's already last year. Yeah. That's they're hopelessly yeah. far behind. And they're saying, oh, now we want to do CBDC. And 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 but the, what they don't realize is that fiat CBDC is going to quickly run into exactly the same problems that any fiat or non-backed currency will have, is that this allows for total numeric inflation and uh, um, devaluation of the uh, of the currency. So um, a good so example the, so the of, of what happens in the... So the, so the government policy on this, right? The regulatory <laughs> regulation kind of policy, get all that is slow, right? I mean, it's slow and everything, not just... Yeah. So that's fine. But in terms of is a capital poured like startups or anything like that to do with this carbon based currency stuff you're talking about? Are there any startups um, like? Yes, there there is a, a whole world of, of startups attempting to do this, but uh, uh, very few of them have the resources other than a small niche. Uh, one uh, comes to mind that the evaluating uh, farming practices for carbon farming. Right. So. Uh, by improvement of practices on 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 the land by existing farmers, um, that in in order to monitor the capturing of the carbon, they are at least taking already tilled agricultural land, which of course is has all kinds of other problems there. And even so, from that standpoint, they're not accounting for things like erosion, biodiversity, uh, you know, pesticide or herbicide poisoning of the soil, you know, uh, soil biodiversity. They don't not accounting for any of these things. You know, so it's a very agronomic in-out model uh, uh, that they're already working with. Um, what I would suggest is something uh, a, a little more organic. Uh, uh, so instead of tractor agriculture, we're looking at organic agriculture, different different set of methods and different set of measurements. Why, why do you um, think that these startups um, have not uh, attracted the attention of um, kind of like uh, venture capitalist investors, like the angels, whatever they call them, uh, you know, like to, to put money. Angels, in, poor devils. Yes. Angels, yeah. So, so is it because, I mean, for example, uh, it's not attractive because it's not tied to high profits or like, why would it not be uh, attractive? Nothing has from, for, this is the first time, first of all, that I hear of an ecosystem. So we would need you to send us a list of who is in this ecosystem. Is that really I've heard of a few as, as actually, far as BC. Um, uh, like uh, Veritree, Cardano, TreeCycle. 
Um, there was a, another one, Climber DAO. Are these the these the type these the things you're thinking of? Uh, yeah, there's a there's a whole world of new startups that have emerged in the last even two three years. Um, probably the 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 early starters were maybe five years ago. Uh -huh. Um, and so it's a very, this is all very, very recent development. Um, but there, so now there's a whole proliferation of these startups. And of course, all of them are asking for money. Um, and you know, then the, these startups are having the same problem as, as NGO uh, proliferation, which is that the pie keeps shrinking and there are more hands grabbing at the pie. Will anyone get a full slice of pie at the end of this game? No. You will be lucky to get crumbs, and that certainly will not be enough to get you to the next pie. So uh, uh, th this market proliferation of new and dead ends, you're, there's going to be dead ends. Ask any VC that, you know, wh what's, what's a good return for you? Oh, I've one out of 10 succeeds, but I'm looking at the ROI of the one that will succeed for the nine that fail. You know, so all of this actually, uh, quite effort is being invested about, into failures. There is some interesting analysis about uh, why uh, for the ones that do succeed, that has to do with the, uh, the, the business model. And like there's an analysis about the ones that do succeed, why they succeed. And also this is the same for some work that uh, I think were uh, the similar um, identifying factors of crowdfunding projects, for example, that do succeed. Uh, more than the ones that don't. And there are some factors that point to why some do and not the others. I, I was just thinking in, in this ecosystem um, that that you're describing, right? Uh, what are the, let's say, the, the, uh, the ideological drives? Why are people, I mean, besides, okay, they are made to make you money, but if you wanted to make profit, maybe you would go to some other, story that is more certain or so so because it's tied to this ecological environmental concern i'm just wondering first of all what is your ideological drive and if you and after that the second question is if you have a map or understanding of a spectrum of ideology of of this kind of ecosystem is it similar let's say question and i finish is it similar to a wider spectrum like we see uh, with uh, with cryptocurrencies where we have like from libertarian like uh, alt right to whatever to um, you know communism cyber communism commons oriented whatever like you know there's a spectrum with this whole blockchain thing anyway uh, and where it's coming from ideologically and now there's more about the blockchain imperialism kind of story of. Um, in the Pacific and the projects there, it's called a Pacific ideology because it's like imperialism, like going to these countries and doing these kind of projects. And because you're talking about the two small African countries, I want to ask you like, on whether you thought about these issues and what is your own ideological drive? Because you are in the tree growing business, right? You, you did say I'm, I'm an environmental activist, right? So if you are in the tree growing business and, and you're interested in doing this, is it, uh, is it purely that you want to make profit uh, or is it what is your let's say ethical ideological uh, whatever responsibility responsible technology agenda or sustainable agenda kind of thing what is yours right when i did the work over the last i'll just say 15 years uh with um uh world to win which has subsequently changed their name to real democracy movement you may you're there in london you're in london Anyway, um, first they said, how do we solve the ecological crisis? Now that's a pretty broad question, but I put out the, in my answer, you know, given three days, I put together the answer about carbon capture, uh, reestablishment of wildlife habitat, uh, and being able to use an integrated system to take human yields from wildlife habitat sustainably. Mangroves is an ideal example. Uh, where you can use uh, with just a little tweak to get it started, that they that they will then develop into a self regenerating ecosystem, attract wildlife, shorebirds, shrimp spawn, you name so, it, all wants so, to live so, in the mangroves and feed off that. So, so in a way, like you are you are attached to some sort of social movement. I take it every time you, you do this kind of work. Um, and and that translates in some kind of business venture idea or is it the other way around you have your own ideas about sustainable and then 
you are part also of a movement that has a similar agenda, if you see what I mean. How does that work? I mean, your business kind of... I see it that we have two forces fundamentally at odds. One has taken literally billions of years to develop, and that is life on this planet, which includes a breathable atmosphere. Uh -huh. Okay. The other one, which is directly counter to this, is that uh, all is that the only thing that matters is money, this number. The only thing that matters is this number and how many of them I have, how much of this number I have, which, you know, I mean, ask anyone who has built a major bridge, you know, the, ask an insurance actuary. They'll say, how many people do we expect to die when we build this? Oh, we can expect between 500 and 800 people to die in its construction. Okay, here's the money. Does it sound like they're really concerned about the people who are going who are going to die in the construction of this bridge? No, so, you know, just they, they are incidental. I'm just trying to understand uh, your your own drive, right? In in uh, wanting to do this work with carbon based currency in particular. Does it come from your engagement with social movements that they ask you to look at this and give ideas? Or because you've been in the tree growing business for so many years, you have developed your own like ecological consciousness, let's say, or environmental consciousness. So you want to see that you work in some kind of business idea that has this um, uh, social value of sustainability, responsibility, and so on. I mean, how, what is the relationship of your business had, let's say, with your ideological, uh, social, really responsible, sustainable, environmental mind? I don't know how to put it. Like, how how does this occur for you? If if you start in the forest, right? You're alone in the forest, and you see there are animals and there are flowers and there are plants, and you're alone in the forest, and you start to walk, and then you run into some people, and people say, "We need these things." And we think we can get these things from the forest. And yes, you can get those things from the forest, uh, you know, but you have to be careful uh, how much you take or the, it will damage the forest. And, and then you keep going and you run into people who have, then you run into a road and you start to run into people who are using machines and uh, artificial, artificially generated energy sources like petrol. Uh, and, and you keep going and eventually get into these really large buildings that have been required a tremendous amount of energy and people's effort and, and, and technology and all of these things. And you, and they, uh, you know, that their concern is how much number can I get out of, out of it? And they are not concerned whatsoever. They will, where do you think clear cutting comes from? Where do you think strip mining comes from? This is not an artisan so, thing where so, someone's trying to get a little bit of coal to put in their stove. It's so what massive operations, you? which... So what inspires you? Perhaps, I mean, I'm trying to make it more explicit. I don't know if you've thought about this, but what inspires your, like, your own um, uh, value system, let's say, right? Is your concern, like, having been a, bio a biology student and ecosystem student and like grown trees ask this question so so it's from your experience like succinctly point that you're actually concerned about you know like these issues it has to do with your interaction right with with the forest the environment so, the trees like right so it's like you and this kind of environment succinctly we have to on succinctly on, on the reality of planet capitalism we see, seek a mechanism or mechanisms to economically justify the existence of life. We, it has to be economically justified in order to continue to live. Right. Okay, so it, so it has to be justified to these people who are holding all the levers of all of the power switches and all of the economic levers and they're staying, you know, very tiny minority of people. Mm -hmm. But because of the unfortunate development of the last 200 years, these are the people who are going to make the decisions on who and what lives and dies. Right. So, uh, for example, uh, I, uh, I'm representative of a small African country, and we've succeeded in evaluating our carbon stock, and we've succeeded in convincing all our farmers that they need to use things like agroforestry and permaculture 
and pyrolysis carbon capture for fuel generation and all of these things. We've convinced everybody to do everything right in Ecotopia, mm -hmm. right? But they say you, you're not, you know, you're not producing a high enough margin to invest in you. Say, okay, then we're positioned to say, and now I will start naming some names. Okay, European Union, you're going to give us euros to maintain and protect our carbon stock and our carbon uptake. Oh, says ECB, what are you going to do if we don't? Well, Yuan are just as good as euros, but they have a little bit different of a plan, which involves stripping the place clean of all life to, for export to China. So if we can't go to you, then we will have to turn to the Chinese in order to get any development funding. Or you can give us some euros and we can build a few roads and maybe a, you know, uh, uh, a, a few sustainably based industries that we could demonstrate our carbon amortization of our industrial production process. Or we can turn to the Chinese and use the Chinese model. Which would you prefer? So now, instead of having a nuclear weapon aimed at somebody now, we have a, a, a sort of a different weapon, which gives the mouse uh, an edge. Which, so if such a, such a mechanism, for example, a carbon-based currency or carbon biodiversity-based currency, is able to be used, this will give economic power and leverage to people who were totally on the bottom of the spectrum before, right? So you're because about reversing uh, exploitation because the, the reality is you have like the peripheral countries that uh, that uh, the, the, the advanced center goes in and, and extracts extortion. It's like exploitation, extraction. This is all that is happening and they're not getting anything back. Uh, yes. Okay? And then they're told, oh yeah, to get you to structurally adjust, to get you more money, you need to do this, right? And then be more democratic in that, that whole story. So what you're saying is well, if I, you I, have this thing, then you could get some leverage against the extraction and exploitation, for example, in places like Africa, right? That, that yeah. Exactly. And even, even, from, a, uh, even from the government standpoint, uh, you have like, Brazil is a very good example, like in, in enforcement, becomes a major issue. I mean, look at illegal logging in Brazil is, is a perfect example. Well, why do we need euros? Well, because we need to pay our army. Well, why do you need to pay your army? Because we need actual boots out there armed to protect the, the trees from illegal logging. And that is actually the reality case in right. Brazil and, and in many places that this is Indonesia is another big perpetrator so, so we um, can close this sort of ideological uh, kind of question if you were to be asked like so what is your own ideology what you and what has inspired your ideology what would you say it, it is do you have like a label for yourself or have you arrived at something like that you want to share a very long time ago when i was a when i was a a, a kid i read a book by ernest Kallenbach called Ecotopia about where the uh, Pacific Northwest by means of nuclear blackmail secedes from the United States and becomes an isolationist country, a dictatorship actually, and but begins to create a different model based on instead of individual transportation, you have primarily public transportation. Everything is, everything is given a lot of thought as to how much impact everything is going to have if we do this thing, what what are the what are the long range consequences as opposed to the short term gain? <clears throat> Person in the stock market is only concerned about the short term gain, and they never know when to stop. So they, if if get allowed to have its way, the the mechanism of capitalism will strip the planet clean of life and make it uninhabitable. So I would like to avoid that. But on the other hand, I also like YouTube. I also like a, a modest amount of industrial pr high, high technology products and appropriate technology uh, products, you know, but we can do with less than having to throw away a plastic thing every time I eat. I really don't like that. Um, and so uh, there, uh, Gaddafi in, in the Green Book makes a, a very clear point that 
whether we're talking about a state controlled, uh, a, a state centralized Soviet model of extraction, mm -hmm. right? Or a capitalist market model of extraction, it remains extraction. That there is no counterbalance to this. Mm -hmm. That production of high speed anti aircraft weaponry is not foremost on the mind of the Amazonian Indian who actually in biological terms is being as correct as they possibly can, taking only what they need and not having overdeveloped sense of stuff, right? Or need all this stuff. Um, and so- if, if I ask you- But, they, but they're- If I throw at you like the word, uh, like the words environmental justice, right? what does this tell you? Do you identify with this uh, concept or not or why not? Uh, justice from whom? Who are, uh, where is this justice coming from? Or how is the currency backed? If we call justice a currency, what is it backed by? And who guarantees it? Well, uh, it, what do you think about this idea of this new generation that has climate anxiety and all that kind of stuff? What's your take on this? I mean, did you um, experience any climate anxiety that... Uh, uh, that uh, drove you to do this kind of work or not? Or like, is it coming just from influencing of what you- Well, when I was doing? growing up, we had global thermonuclear war. Right, okay. So the prospect of, of, of making the planet uninhabitable with the use of nuclear weapons was ever present. And all parties rattling sabers and carrying out their little proxy wars in smaller countries by uh, developing their arms export industries uh, I'm looking at you, United States and Soviet Union. And, uh, you know, but eventually I think that you, what what happens is that even if it's on a small scale, you have a, a Sandinista response. Well, we we can't, this situation is intolerable and it's unsustainable anymore. And that finally, if we're going to have some justice, where is that going to come from? Who's going to go get it? And how are you going to do that? This is uh, life and death, literally. Uh, mm -hmm. Or uh, we could go back to Vietnam. Yeah, well, that's why you you would. Uh, I think that it is your your generation was influenced partially by that because you were born in sixty eight. So actually, you came after that concern, really, right? Uh, into you were more like the ninety eighties kind of. Um, yeah, like so the, uh, I grew up war. watching war footage from Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, I don't know if uh, Jacob, you you want to go with your questions? Yeah, if, I have a few questions. Um, and uh, can you excuse please. me for three minutes, and I'll be back. It's all going to continue happening. Just excuse me. Yeah, sure. I actually I was uh, I only read Ecotopia this year, which is uh, which is quite a which I mean it's a. Uh, it's a, it was obviously something that was missing on my, I've had it on my reading list for some time and I finally got around to it. And the one thing I found interesting actually about Ecotopia, because uh, the, the way I, the way I actually got around to reading Ecotopia was through, hang on a minute, it, it came, I think it was through reading uh, the works of Tim Maughan. Have you read this? He's a contemporary author, M-A-U-G-H-A-N. And he also worked on, um, uh, well, he's worked on the. He's he's a he's. Both I haven't a, read him now. No, he's a writer and a journalist, and he's he's like really been very interested with the, uh, the global supply chain and and how you know that huge engineering project unfolded over the past thirty years. And anyway, I got I got around to Ecotopia, and one of the funny things about Ecotopia was that I realized that there is there is virtually no globalization. You know, it's in the, in the book there are no there are virtually no exchanges with any. Uh, you know, the, it's it's an autarcic community, and and I, I found that was interesting. How that book, which was like, you know, it was very important. I think also for all the people who, um, you know, all the people who initiated, um, uh, in, you know, interconnected computing in the nineteen seventies, the late seventies, and that that was a big influence for that whole, you know, so, that whole countercultural go slash cybercultural um, beginnings. And I found that quite quite interesting that there was. 
they were that that this uh, like um uh, that that um utopia in a sense is taking place in a in a in a non-connected non-globalized world which uh, in a way in a way is kind of interesting but anyway uh the question i wanted to ask you um I mean, I heard you you mentioned these like some of these projects, and I haven't really studied them. Uh, like the the um those various few that um uh very tree tree cycle climate DAO and etc. And um, I was wondering if um those players uh or others that you were thinking of that uh because you you said there's like a I don't know if it was you or, or Athena who said like there's a whole ecosystem of these projects, but I was wondering if they oh yeah. Like, are there like links? What are the, what links are there between them? Are we talking? I mean, are there links as in they may be using they using are they all using the same blockchain for some? Are, are they all on on proof of proof of no. stake? Uh, uh, and obviously, there's some. No. You know, there are different territories. Like I've seen, I've read about projects on in Indonesia, other in um, Madagascar. Um, so is there like is there is there is there any link between these projects uh, that you know of, or are we talking, as you said earlier on, of just a load of you know pioneers coming in and trying to catch their crumbs? Uh, at 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 this point, it's it's amoeba like. There is no coordinated. There's very little coordination. Um, in fact, when it came to uh, uh, appropriate technology and sustainability. Uh, I actually back in 2005 that there's Appropedia, which is a, you know, people's wiki uh, for appropriate technology. And this is run by a guy, Lonnie Grafman and, uh, from Northern California and uh, Chris Watkins in Australia, mainly. <clears throat> I mean, a lot of people are involved, but uh, uh, I said, I showed up at their conference and I said, are you aware of CD3WD by Alex Weir in Zimbabwe? And he's like, We'd never heard of that. And I said, well, you really, you you guys are, are operating, unfortunately, in parallel, which means that you're not contacting each other and, and, and that really you should be working together because there's, you know, it's better than reinventing the wheel. You know, if it's all, if a wheel is already made, use the wheel you've got, which yeah. would be like CD3WD is a collection of, you know, okay, so here's a usable information in the field in development and, and you know, uh, and, yeah. and so there's no point in rewriting everything. So, but at least we have, if we ha have the CD three WD, which is entirely borrowed and there's no, no claim to original work there, <clears throat> but I mean like a whole library, of course. And as I sit in, in one of the biggest libraries in the United States, uh, that you have to know what the general content of the library is before you can start to make any original work from that foundation yeah, yeah. right mm -hmm. so if you were to have to rewrite all of the books in the library from the beginning oh, what a task right yeah, 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 yeah. but you don't have to because all the books have been written at least the ones that are in the library okay and do you know any anything else uh, because you you mentioned um like the, the like right, put it in a in uh, layman's language, the question is like the world elite, the question of that, what you named the unfortunate uh, developments over the past 200 years and and the, the you know, the, obviously the role of the banking, the, the existing banking system as it stands today. Um, obviously, the uh, original blockchain based projects were, um, you know, uh, I mean, if you're thinking, even if you think the most notorious Bitcoin uh, uh, were projects going against supposedly offering a, an alternative to that existing uh, banking system. Um, this doesn't seem to be the case uh, with uh, with the project you're suggesting. You, you the, the, I mean, what if and forgive me if I misunderstand, but what uh, the, what I what from what I get from your presentation here is that really that we we've got to work with them in some way uh, with the European Union, etc. There's no, I mean, is yeah. then is, with, have, without government mandate, it's pointless. Yeah, so it, there has to be there there has to be government mandate. Um, if the only thing that people respond to is threat of force, then threat of force is what you have to use. You know, you don't use a hammer on a screw. You got to use a screwdriver on a screw. So if uh, threat of force I, I really think that's flawed thinking, but that's the that's the current model for every government on, on the planet is that it operates on threat of force. 
So sure, yeah, that's but, the current um, but reality. The, uh, the question being, uh, what we're talking, what I mean, you mentioned, obviously, agricultural producers, um, just uh, you know, people living, um, you know, working and living uh, on the land. Um, would there not be forms of uh, autonomous organization that they could that could be impulsed and whereby they'd have control themselves of the currency without going through a uh, central government, uh, uh, if you like, a central government backed, uh, well, not backed, but central government approved currency? Sure, there already are. Uh, go to any village that doesn't use money anywhere and you'll find social organization. That's humans do this naturally. We always have. Yeah, yeah, sure. It, but I mean, the only way that we, the lion's going to get you if you don't have more humans around, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, though, like a currency, like the one you, the ones you're talking of that could, that could be organized without going through uh, the, the bank would, that would not be like um, uh, controlled and, and, and regulated and, um, and uh, approved. Uh, and, and speaking of Apropedia on there, I, there's the, there is a material backed currency, a very basic user issued material backed currency, which I suggested called the that I called the Wavo, where the basis of the currency is eggs. It's issued by uh, a consortium of egg producers. You could be in a small village in Jamaica and you could very easily find out who has chickens and who has eggs. Okay. Then you could then you're able to get an accounting of your your uh, uh, general production so that you can determine how much currency representative of those eggs you can put into circulation safely without ever exceeding your egg limit. Um, and you, but you don't think that would be possible for the carbon uh, market that you mentioned before though? But who, 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 what are you going to trade it for? Unless, unless, you know, we literally have to sell you breathable oxygen, which I understand is going on in Beijing now, but unless we're in a place where I can literally sell you air by denying you air mm -hmm. and yeah. saying that these trees are going to make air, we're, we're looking at a ubiquity. A hundred years ago, drinkable water was a ubiquity. It would never run out. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, Wrong. I've had a bit of a, an emergency. That's why I left for the three minutes. Now, just, no worries. Okay. Just, I, just, I, just I have something to propose. If um, if if you're both uh happy um to kind of continue the discussion, I have an emergency, which means my son has no somehow gotten on the bus, so I have to go and get him on the school, which is a ten minute drive. Now, either you can uh, no the conversation, or we. Um, we would take a break for like uh, 15 minutes. I can go and pick him up and come back and, and, and do another session in like 15, 20 minutes. Do you think you can? I'd, do I'd, or... I'd say just just leave it on. I could take five leave myself, but I think just leave leave it on. Just leave it on. Jacob and I can pick up okay. and, right. uh, so in your you, in your you, absence. And you we have can wait like to... a I'm really sorry about this. This is very unorthodox. We don't even understand the basic. No. How he's not on the bus now. Like that that's another story. We have no idea. Just leave it on. Go. Okay, I leave go, it to go, go. I go and I come back. Go. Okay. I'm really sorry about this. Yeah. Like, Jacob knows me. Things are right now. happen to me, but uh, this time they have. Not so I just <laughs> see you in a, see you in a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the, I, actually, I only really had two other questions. I mean, we can carry on talking for for a bit, and then I I've got a, I'm going to no have worries. some some things to deal with here because we're coming up for the time my kids get back from school too. <laughs> so uh, okay, so what I what I'm suggesting in answer to that is the, a structure. You have to use the existing institutions. We don't really have a choice, you know. So you have to put the function to those existing institutions. So the way that the existing institutions function that I see happening is that from whatever your fictional government, okay, your fictional government is saying, okay, we're going to go ahead with this uh, uh, carbon currency program. So we're going to start with education. It's always going to start with education. We're going to educate the farmers. We're going to say, okay, this is how you can demonstrate that you are uptaking carbon, farmer. And here's a whole list of methods. Maybe you'll also get seeds. Maybe you will also get uh, uh, biodiversity, agroecology, education, just brief little, like if you leave a certain part and here's some seeds, throw, throw this mix into a strip and there you go. 
and and you can and you know so and say then we have since you all have cell phones that you use all day to beg people for money this is how you actually get money out of a cell phone that you take that you're able to verify using this application that's going to be go through again through government regulation and say okay you can demonstrate the growth of your trees you can take an accounting of things like mortality weather can you know it's and this is a great uh, opportunity for data collection for user data collection in the field unparalleled instead of having to send someone with a with a phd to the other side of the planet to take a look at it only what they can see through their own two eyes now you have millions of eyes attached to cameras that are attached to the internet unparalleled opportunity for data collection okay so now they're doing that and they say, okay, well, now we know how much carbon credit we are able to safely issue, that we can verify our standing stock, we can verify our uptake, and we can take action on this to issue this currency and how much we're going to issue and how we're going to quantify this currency exactly. Then the central banker can turn around and go to his important conference in London and say, I'm a central banker, you're a central banker. We've issued this currency and we would like you to trade you, your, some of your currency that you have issued from some of our currency that we have issued. And let's assume they cooperate. Okay, we'll make that trade because I've got this place over here. These people are concerned and they want to, and they're willing to pay me some of what they've gotten. Don't worry about that, that's my end here take this uh, uh, fiat currency that, again, euros, pounds, dollars. And this is, you figure out what to do with that, that's on your end. Okay, central, uh, central banker goes back to small country, says, okay, now we've got this currency. Now we can use this currency in, in any way that we already do, which is that I can buoy the purchasing power parity of the local of the national currency of the country by holding it in the bank, okay, which will buoy the value of the currency. Or we can put this back into uh, the mechanisms and institutions necessary to carry out and reinforce the value of our own carbon biodiversity yeah. currency by putting people, biologists in the field to take the measurements, but uh, people in the accounting and administration of the instrument itself, uh, and and back into giving a, a a carrot to the small farmer and saying, since you've done so well, here's your annual check. Enjoy the this part of the national currency. So you're not paying the farmer in, in, in necessarily in the carbon currency, which they're unable to trade because you need this massive aggregation of of stuff in order to be able to trade on that level, which the, the you know person holding three hectares in Africa is not able to do. They, they're they not a central banker is their big problem in life. But the central banker is a central banker. So, so in more practical terms, I like a, a small Mediterranean country as a good example. And she was talking about communism. If we nationalize the trees as a national asset, we account for the amount of carbon that they have, and we issue a carbon credit based on that. The, the, the trees are now protected by the state as a national asset, that it becomes a criminal offense to harm them, and everybody's educated that they know that you don't harm this kind of tree, okay? But the land is not nationalized. The land that the trees are sitting on is not nationalized. We can leave that in the market, that's fine. You can buy and sell the land, you just can't harm the trees. And the produce of the trees, it need not be nationalized. Now, it could be, and I'll get to that. But the produce can go directly into the, into the common market, into the local market. Olives, for example, is a great example. You know, So the production of olive oil becomes its own. You can have the olives, just leave the trees alone, see? Or, and specifically one of the countries I have been working with in Africa could, dominates the production of a certain spice that's a tree spice. That's why they're particularly interesting to me. 
This also allows, if we go one step further in nationalization, this allows aggregation of the production output for export and quality control on a national level, right? So now not only can we issue a carbon currency on the tree, we can issue a spice currency on the spice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Or if you were get, small Mediterranean it, country, you could issue an oil currency on the oil. Yeah. Okay, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Um, there are a couple Great. of um, a, a couple of um, just bits here that are that are running through my mind. I'm, I haven't, you know, obviously these are probably things you thought of, and it's just that it's it's uh, first of all, what about the like supranational institutions uh, and United Nations? Um, uh, obviously, I'm thinking World Bank. Uh, that that you know those that those players are they would they in your model would they have a role to play? What which players? What and what role? I find these institutions to be overgrown. Uh, that they cannot break free from the impetus of the existing structure. Mm -hmm. That they have to reinforce the existing structure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, um, World Bank, IMF, obviously. Yeah. So, uh, uh, an interesting. I saw an interesting post from the actually the uh, the president of the uh, World Bank group that administers the funds of the World Bank, and I've done aid and development proposals. I don't even want to get into it. But he was. They were saying how that there's a fertilizer crisis in Africa. What they're specifically referring to is the export of industrial fertilizers to African nations and that they were having a logistical, yeah, isn't that kind of gross? Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, this guy may know about a spreadsheet, he may know about, uh, and and incidentally, he was the eco chief economist, the guy running the World Bank right now is the chief econ was the chief economist for Bear Stearns in 2008. Now, I don't know, I would like an eight plus digit salary for being able to, for having demonstrated that I can successfully demolish a major financial institution. Yeah. That, yeah. It, how, where's my reward for screwing up that bad? Anyway. No, obviously, yeah, yeah. I mean. But the, obviously he's not an ecosystem biologist. He's a central banker. He's not an ecosystem biologist. He doesn't have any idea what he's doing. But nevertheless, there he is at the levers deciding where the money's going to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, these people, whether, I mean, yeah, I mean, sure. Sometimes I people was, only listen when you got a gun in their face. Yeah, putting these guys in in the same sack, obviously, is that's the wrong way of looking at it. But I'm, but surely in some of the United Nations, uh, like the United, United Nations Trade and Development, uh, wouldn't they, wouldn't there be some interesting allies uh, in those institute, in that institution, for instance, don't you think? The after having done some looking and believe me, I'm always looking at funding opportunities and, you know, positions with UNFAO and stuff like that. So I've been looking at this for a good 25 years. OK. But the, so there's a disturbing development with the United Nations, and that is that they are that they are cooperating and penetrated. We will penetrate the cabinets that they have been penetrated by another organization called the World Economic Forum, which okay. is stationed in Davos, Switzerland. Perhaps you've heard of them. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. They have a very different plan about, uh, you know, we could only hope that it was a meritocratic technocracy, but I agree with uh, <laughs> Verifacus that that's not what we're going to get. We're going to get techno-feudalism. That's mm -hmm. what we're actually going to get. They, they, you know, you're going to be happy. You're going to be happy no matter how much drugs we have to pump into you. Yeah. and have nothing we will own everything okay that's that's nice you're megalomaniacs you need to be hospitalized uh you know to allow other people to live normally not given the levers of major of the global finance that's okay. no okay. <laughs> you need you need help <laughs> that's um, what you need. okay um now, one I think one of the key uh, one of the key points you you're making in I mean um is the the question of data collection in that model you mentioned data collection and yes. how that would indeed be a great opportunity uh for, like for grassroots data collection 
Um, you mentioned earlier on. Uh, I mean, I'm in France, and uh, I think there's there's there is some statistical, uh, you know, uh, data produced by the National Forestry Office, but um, obviously not on all on all the counts you're sure. mentioning there. And this is this is where I find your project really very interesting, but also very ambitious. Uh, that, and you said it yourself that the problem is, you know, how to how to verify, uh, how to ver how to verify, how to quantify. Um, I mean, what 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 I what struck me first when you were talking of that is first of all, um, uh, one, there's the possibility of um, of abuse. Uh, to what extent is that? You know, how would that yes. be addressed? Uh, secondly. We, if you you could cheat the system by loading the sample. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. They, they, I mean, how does one? I mean, where perhaps blockchain could be useful uh, to some extent. There, I'm not sure how, but uh, that's something that I got at the back of my mind. But then, secondly, what I was thinking, what what we're talking about here is a whole lot of data production, data storage, data transfer, and all that has a cost. Uh, all that has a cost. Uh, um, you know, and uh, again, that there's yes, there's a resource cost there. Um, what uh, you know, what how you how are you kind of thinking of that problem, and then last of all, because we are interested in well, this would be a technology. Mm -hmm. This is just the last question. Um, is um, you you know, you're you're talking about the central banks in a Mediterranean country or in an, in a sub-Saharan African country. Obviously, there's always the problem of um, sure. when you said bring when we get the fiat money and with the fiat money and we come back and we can put it into development projects or we can put it into to like a um a, 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 um what's the word I'm looking at? a wind a wind a wind a uh, wind wind um windfall windfall is it windfall wind wind rush wind roll you know anyway but it could also be put into yeah. a building another swimming pool at the palace and you know just um putting up some more walls yeah. to protect wealth anyway that's not my question is but it is in a sense why not kind of short why not why not um sh short circuit the local central bank and I mean, why not? I mean, I know this sounds very pompous and 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 it's like all very nice theoretically, but um, is there any kind of practical way of thinking of that within the realm of of DeFi? Uh, that's my question. Um, as as far as uh, taking control from uh, uh, the central bankers of small fictional country, is is that? What you're suggesting? Yeah, I was I was thinking. Um, obviously, you got to have you need a critical mass of um, of farmers, of people, uh, you know, on grassroots people who are going to be doing the actual data collection for the currency to actually function, uh, for it to be, um, you know, even uh, if you like, um, recognizable, uh, acceptable. Uh, what's the word? You know, um, uh, yeah, um, believed in, <laughs> like any currency has to be. Um, so obviously one way of doing that is using existing nation state, uh, existing, using existing nation state apparatus. apparatus and they, you know, they will do the job. Supposedly that's what they've been doing for hundreds of years or, or, or in that supposedly Africa. as they've been doing all, all along. Yeah. Uh, but I was thinking is, is there not, some, could there not be some hope of, uh, of short circuiting them and, and, and gaining a critical mass, uh, using a DeFi uh, using a you know a, a DeFi solution, a D, a, an alternative finance. You see what I mean? Uh, yes, I, I suppose it's possible. Uh, local currency is so many. I mean, over the last couple hundred years, actually, local currency has been uh, uh, tried. You know, uh, in earnest and with the you know with the best of intentions. The problem with local currencies. I'm using that as an example. There are many kinds. Is that <laughs> it? Had that without being translatable into the national currency, it's not perceived to have any value. That's yeah. that's the problem. So the the yeah. the guy with three hectares on the ground is not concerned with the mechanics of how it got there. He's concerned with how many of the national currency winds up in his hand for doing what yeah. he's doing. That's yeah, he's not his concern. Time he wants to feed his kids. Your... Uh, you know, exchange on uh, some blockchain exchange, you know, cryptocurrency exchange. I can see what you mean. Actually gaining the critical mass. Yeah, I'm too busy yeah. trying to find the next bowl of food to worry about that. 
yeah, yeah. And what about the uh, the, the issue of um, uh, the actual cost uh, and resources of that data um, storage transfer? Um, you know, because this is obviously a, you know the one of the main, obviously one of the the the, the oft heard criticisms against uh, any cryptocurrency is the supposedly the the terrible cost of mining and. And even you, even with with uh, proof of uh, stake, you're still going to have a, a significant cost there for data um, transfer, data storage. Um, what what right. about that's, I mean... that's why I quit a crypto design project. Okay. Proof of stake of what? Proof of stake of what? <laughs> okay. This this blockchain. Can I I don't know tie my boat up to it to keep it from floating away? Can I eat it? Can I wear it? Can I live in it? What can I do with it? It's not backed by anything. It's worse than fiat currency because at least fiat currency has to issue a report of how many they put out. <laughs> you know, you can't, mm -hmm. again, back to the ball of gold larger than the earth problem, you know. From, from an ecosystem standpoint, I'm glad we're recording this. From an ecosystem standpoint, it's like accounting in goats. If, you, if you're using goats as your currency, right? But, and you're talking about buried cost, the buried cost of, of, the, of the goats. What, what is the impact that's being had of the buried cost? Okay. And this is well known to have happened with goats and cattle and in Africa. If, if, if wealth is measured in the number of goats, but not the quality of those goats, then the number of goats will increase and the quality will decrease. In currency, this is known as inflation. Until you finally you have a, a, a whole lot of goats that are not worth anything because they're all too skinny. They're all on the brink of death, which is a chronic condition in, in many areas where animals are used as currency. And this, but this is well predates the modern financial system. What's not considered is, is is if the quality of the uh, of this and and rather than the number of goats, but the quality of the goat and the support system of the goats. If the port support system that produced the goats was primary, we need to maintain good water. We need to maintain good habitat, wildlife. You know, uh, we need to maintain the ideal conditions for the to produce the highest quality of goats then you would have a, a fundamental shift in, 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 in that kind of accounting. You might start uh, uh, accounting it in weight per goat, the weight per goat, rather than the total number of goats. And, and that would be a, a different form of accounting because you'd have to really have to weigh the goats. Is there going to be effort required in weighing the goats? Yes. Is there going to be effort required in producing the system that produces the goats? Yes. Are you going to get better goats? Mm -hmm. Kenyan beef, the history of Kenyan beef is the, is the textbook case example. At the turn of last century prior to World War I, Kenyan beef was one of the most prized exports in the entire British Empire. <laughs> okay. Everybody wanted Kenyan beef because of, of the high quality, amazing quality of the Kenyan beef. Well, it was killed by its own success because they say, oh, well, if beef is what you want, then we have to increase the number of cows. And when you increase the number of cows without considering the impact that it's going to have on the support system that creates the cows, you're going to end up using the cows to destroy the support system that creates them in the first place. Now, a current staple of media in the region, Western media, I will add, is a desiccated cow in the road. They, they love this. Every time the word famine comes up or drought comes up they've, they've got these probably have a file of pictures of mummified cows okay so in a, about a hundred years we've gone from one of the highest quality export products in the world to overtaxing the system that creates it destroying the system that creates it <clears throat> we have to start going in the opposite direction where we create the systems that support the quality products whether locally domestically or for export but we have to support that system rather than focusing on the one thing one more example someone 
on, on a development project, they wanted to introduce a tree called Polonia tomentosa to West Africa. And uh, engineer mindset, okay, engineer mindset. Mm -hmm. And he said, but the number of board feet, and I said, after the briefest due diligence, it's listed as an invasive species in North America, even though Walmart continues to sell it, which tells you something about the Americans. But to introduce this wind-borne seed tree that's almost impossible to kill and benefits from fire while producing a huge load of flammable fuel that benefits, it's, it's a fire climax plant and you can't kill it with a bulldozer and every brew re-sprouts. <clears throat> I can't attach my name to this. If you want to go ahead with this and say, why don't, why, what is the problem using local indigenous trees? The, why is that a problem? Well, the, it hasn't maximized the number of board feet produced. So, so you're going to wipe out an entire ecosystem with kudzu for board feet, for a number in your mind about the amount of wood you're going to get by, by introducing this. This is due diligence and species introduction. You know, I mean, you, you can post analyze the economic impacts, but let's take a look at the, the impacts in reality first. Let's remove money from the equation. What happens if we do this in reality? That's the question. Not, well, if we're going to make more money, we need to find some facts that fit the making of money. <clears throat> sure, sure, yeah. I, I whether it has any bearing on reality or not. Okay, um, but coming back to, to my question about the actual costs of the, um, the you mean the app, if you're talking about the app, say I'm the farmer out there and there's like a, maybe, uh, you know, 250,000 of me, uh, we're all equipped with the app. Uh, we're all going to be so you know there's there's obviously a cost for uh, you know for that for that data um uh, would you envisage blockchain being of any use uh, at that point um i'm not talking about i'm not talking about tokens and crypto and what have you but about the actual blockchain technology for securing the transaction for for the the transparency of the transactions for how do you see that I really don't see that as ha having very much use. I mean, you need an accounting system, yes. But I mean, this can be accomplished with, you know, uh, pebbles or paper and pencil or, you know, it's just that the cell phone app would be much faster and, you yeah. know, be able to aggregate a large amount of this data without having to fill a building as large as this with paper in order yeah. to account yeah. for it. This is the advantage of, of, of computerization is that, you know, I can, I can hold a, a library this size on something the size of my thumb, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it will... Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But there is like, um, there is a, there is a, I mean, there is a-, a You familiar with Earth 2.0? No, I don't think I am. Earth... Are you familiar with Earth 2.0? Okay. No. This was a conference that was held back in, oh gosh, I don't know, 2005, six, seven, something like this, um, about developing a simulation model for the planet. This, in order to aggregate all of the data that's collected in one place, things like weather, land use, vegetation cover, uh, you know, biodiversity, and you've got your various geographic information system layers. Right, you got a road layer, you got a pipe layer, you got a, a electrical layer, you got okay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and just layers and layers and layers and layers of map, right? In order to account and for this spatial, the geographic uh, information. And so their idea, and this was a big conference, Bay Area, back when I was living in San Francisco, dealing with a bunch of techies. Um, was to develop a simulation model for the entire processes of the planet. You can imagine how handy this would come in for somebody who is concerned about things like land use and climate change. How handy it would be to have this interrelated and queryable data all assembled in one spot. Could it be monetized? Yes. Would I, I like to open, have that open sourced to all of humanity for its benefit? Yes. 
Is that going to cost something? Yes. And uh, just out of curiosity, where did that where, where did that project go? I mean, how did it could it come to an end, or what 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 happened? This is fifteen years back. He's fifteen years. Yeah, I'm not sure if if I think a lot of those people wound up going to work for Google. Um, <laughs> does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, they 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 lost, uh, and then the other then the other half uh, they 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 had to sell their tech van stocks, and uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, and sign a 25 year contract that says I'm not going to do IP or tell anybody to speak of anything. And, I'm, and, and in other words, I'm locked into a 25 year contract with you. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. Yeah. And not allowed to share anything without charging people money. You got to charge those people that money. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Yeah. All Can right, you give well, me like um, one minute to go? Sorry. And return. I'm sorry. Can you give me like one minute to? Well, actually, I, I have to. Can you to give me one minute? My, oh, my kids you gotta go. Back. It's half. All right. I'm in France, and it's half past five, and my kids are getting back. So I'm gonna. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to bow. Oh, out. you better go. Um, I expect Athena will be back in, in a few minutes because she's been gone for what, like fifteen now. So Great. you probably have a few more questions to ask yeah. you. And um, I don't know how. How did you two guys? How did you meet up in the first place, though? Oh, geez, it was through. Uh... Uh, I think originally organizing uh, an organizing experiment that I did on Facebook about ah. 12 years ago. Okay, great. Okay. Because, uh, oh, well, here she is. Anyway, but it, I'll, let, I mean, I'll let you go. Oh, there thinking. she is. Thanks very much for your, for your, for your great. time. Great. Th thanks so much, Jacob, and have a great day. Cheers. Bye-bye. And I'm glad you got it. Thank goodness okay. anybody got it. <laughs> great. Yes. Thank you, Jacob. Oh uh, yeah, sorry about okay, that. Okay, and, and now 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 there's three, and now it's my turn. Let me come back in about one minute. Okay, okay? sure. Let's, so you want to take like um, five minute break? What right now? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's do that, and then come back in like okay. five minutes, and then we can wrap this up. Five yeah. minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Be right back. 